I reached out to someone who has helped me tremendously with this fascinating subject of Sasquatch. She has written a couple books about her experiences with the forest people. I have read both books and not only did I enjoy them tremendously, but I also learned a lot from them. Over time, after exchanging experiences and sharing her knowledge and wisdom with me, she has become what I would consider a true friend. I asked her if she would talk about how she lost her fear of the Sasquatch. Here is what she said. How does one go from believing Bigfoot was a myth, something dreamed up by people wanting attention, to all-encompassing love, respect, and sheer awe? Yes, my laughter at this make-believe creature changed quickly to fear when a massive, hairy beast ran into the headlight beams of our car. It had to be 8 feet tall and 700 pounds or more. Its enormous chest and arms made it appear as if it had no neck. Its thighs were bigger than my waist. My brain didn't register this unknown sight. My ears throbbed with my heartbeat and my stomach twisted in knots. There was no way this creature, this myth and joke, actually existed. But what else could it have been? After all, Indiana wasn't home to bears or other large predators. After contacting the local Bigfoot group, I was introduced to these incredible marvels within the forest. Things I never noticed until they were pointed out. Unnatural things. Trees bent to the ground, creating arches. Enormous trees broken off at the ground, moved to another area and propped against other trees. And other large trees, broken while surrounded by dozens of other trees, standing perfectly strong and untouched. I was now curious about this thing I used to laugh about and I became obsessed. Of course, knowing little about Bigfoot, I did what most people did when they went out searching for the giant creatures. I knocked on trees and waited in silence for a response. I yelled, whooped, and screamed in hopes of drawing them closer. Be careful what you wish for. They came close, more than once. One time, while on a secluded trail, I knocked on trees. And suddenly, there was a response, followed by another, then another. Before I knew it, the knocks were within feet. I could hear heavy footfalls and leaves rustling, another knock from behind me, and the next was just ahead, on the opposite side of the trail. I was being flanked. My heart slammed against my chest wall and my breath caught in my throat. I dropped the stick and I ran. I arrived to the safety of the abandoned campground. My forehead dripped with sweat, even though it was a late winter day, but I was safe now, or so I thought. The bathroom door slammed over and over again, followed by heavy footsteps a short ways away down the hill. I was terrified. I realized they could have killed me and I wasn't sure I would ever come back. Yet the more I thought about things, the more I realized they could have killed me in a flash, but they didn't. What did I do that made them choose to spare me? After all, I did do things in hopes of drawing them in. Tree knocks and howls and whoops. What in God's name was I communicating to them? I mean, all I knew for sure came from people on television trying to find Bigfoot and explaining that tree knocks were simply the creature's way of letting the others know something. I was mortified, and it was then I decided that there must be a better way, a gentler way of doing things. I came across a woman in Washington State who made Bigfoot videos. She had a place she called a gifting site where she left various objects for the Bigfoots that lived around her. She never knocked, but instead spoke into the forest. She didn't scream or whoop. Rather, friends would play music and her dogs would bound around as if playing with something we couldn't see. It was then that I decided to try the gentle ways of reaching out to these creatures. I realized first and foremost that I was in their home and I needed to show the utmost respect. I did, and I shared gifts with them. I spoke with them, and I never again knocked. Yet the fear was still there, just below the surface, bubbling, brewing, and waiting to burst forward at the mere sound of footsteps. But then something happened, and it changed everything. It was winter, 
15 degrees and the campground was still closed. We had been there since 9 p.m. in the dark and freezing cold, enjoying the crackling fire and conversation with a friend. It was now 2.30 a.m. Sure, we had heard the distant scream of the female Bigfoot as she moved from north to south, the coyotes calling in unison behind her. But not much more happened. So as we began the trek back to our vehicles, a howl pierced the darkness. It was close. So close, in fact, that I felt vibration in my chest. The fear burst forward and I ran as fast as I could to the safety of our car. I was, again, shaking, sweating, and struggling to hear over the heartbeat in my ears. Then I realized we had voice recorders running. Did I record the beast and its deep, terrorizing howl? Surely I did, as it was very, very close. And after arriving home, I listened, and there it was, the howl. But what followed the howl changed me forever. You see, after he howled, he spoke. And as he spoke, though I couldn't understand his words, I heard a yearning and deep want, a need almost. I listened to the recording, I don't know, maybe 100 times. And each time I still heard the same thing. He didn't want us to leave. From that moment on, everything changed for me. And although I continued my gifting and research, it was that recording that changed it all. They were no longer creatures, but fascinating beings. They had a family and lived as I did. They were intelligent beyond belief and no longer animalistic beasts, so many believe them to be. Yes, from that moment on, the fear subsided. I no longer pursued them with knocks and screams, but with music and laughter and play. And they came to me. They blessed me with gifts. They trusted me and my child, and they watched over the both of us. They protected us from disbelief to burning fear to what I can only describe now as love. I love my Bigfoot family, the Sasquatch, Big Brother, Sabe, or Oscar and Felix. They are beautiful, amazing beings. My only hope is that more will let the fear melt away as the knocks stop and the minds and hearts open. They are here to teach us, to share, to love, to learn, to teach, and to live with us without fear. That is the end of what Edwina wrote to me. Thank you so much, Edwina. She wrote me this in her free time, and I asked if it would be okay if I shared the books she wrote. These are the books she wrote, if anyone is interested. As I mentioned before, I enjoyed them very much. Indiana Bigfoot, The Beautiful Mind. Indiana Bigfoot, The Cave and Beyond.